What do you get when you mix one part philosophy, one part politics, and cut it with a healthy shot of history? You get the perfect podcast cocktail. Thank you for listening. Now sit back, open your drinks, and open your minds. This is Six Pack Philosophy. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy with Mike and John. I'm Anastasia, and this week we're discussing subliminal messaging. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Liquid Truth Serum IPA. From the Dogfish Head Brewery in Delaware, this is a 6.8% ABV. I'm looking forward to this. This may be the best nice. name of a beer for a uh, for this show, yeah. that I've ever heard. Yeah, I, I, I went through and, and, and kind of picked out. Is that the Illuminati eye I see in the middle? Uh, it's just not all in the triangle. Seeing eye. That's the yeah. all-seeing eye. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, right? Yeah. It, it, that they use it in the Illuminati. Yeah. yeah. Freemasons use it. The Egyptians used it. It may be hidden in our uh, in our video here. I, I, I'm not yeah. sure. Now, speaking of Illuminati, aren't they like the primary culprits for use of subliminal messages? Yeah, uh, I think they're controlling the government. But you I know, think I think through subliminal everything. messaging. I, I think at this point, it's not even subliminal. They're just so overt. That it, yeah. <laughs> Here's my thing: is if it's subliminal, oh my god, if it's subliminal, why does everybody know about it? That's a good question. You know, that's, that's the whole thing about if the Freemasons are a secret society. Well, I know about the Freemasons, so I don't think so. I know some Masons. <laughs> yeah. So, well, <laughs> if you want to know why everybody knows about it, I think we can talk about a guy named James Vickery. So James Vickery was a scientist, and in 1957, he made a really bold claim. He claimed that in a movie theater, he used a device called a tachistoscope. Tachistoscope? Mm. Is that how you say that word? Tachistoscope? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, tachistoscope, I think. Tachistoscope. Okay, he used a tachistoscope to flash by a message telling people to buy popcorn and Coke. Yep. And it took a few milliseconds, a lot shorter than the supposed 13 milliseconds needed for... Uh, conscious registry. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, later. Um, and he reported huge increases in sales of popcorn and Coke. Now, there's one little caveat to this story. It's bullshit. Yeah. The guy made the whole thing up. It was a hoax. He, he ended up having to admit the whole thing. But the whole incident created enough of a flurry to get some legislation passed through, yeah, yeah. Uh, banning this kind of stuff, as well as to fund some legitimate scientific research on it so if you want to know why we know about it the reason is james vickery yeah yeah and 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 you know beyond that you've got to put yourself in the time period okay and realize that this is right at the height of, of, of freudianism and you had freud out there that was talking about how you know you have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and that there were things that you know freud was trying to explain that there were things that we learn subconsciously and things that we do subconsciously yeah and you know we know that's true we know that there is a subconscious and a conscious N none of us consciously think about breathing none of us consciously think about that there's something else there so that i i think the the environment was was ripe right right at that time period to say well well we know this happens we know there is a subconscious so how do we use it yeah it was almost like a a horror movie type thing um, around the idea of consciousness. Um, you know, what could people be made to do? You know, is there a way that we can utilize the subconscious yeah, and uh, control people without it, their knowledge? It, it, is there a way to use subliminal stimuli mm -hmm. to make you do something? Yeah. Is there a way to mind control somebody yeah. to, to an extent? You know, uh, uh, and, and I, I really don't like using that word, but but is there a way to, 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 to make somebody do do something they don't want to do or they otherwise wouldn't do. And that's kind of what, what this idea is, is is about, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I hate the word mind control, too, because it supposes you ever had free will to begin with, but I don't <laughs> think that's what this episode is about. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, after this happened, um, you know, I mentioned the laws, but we know that the legislature sometimes acts irrationally based on fear and based on popular calls to action. Sometimes. 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 <laughs> there was that one time they did that, something. That one time they were perfectly right. Yeah. Well, there was more than one. There yeah. was the 13th, 14th, 15th, and 19th Amendments. Those were all okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the 19th is questionable, but, yeah. you, know, you know. 
But anyway, so we know that that basing the fact that there is a law against something doesn't necessarily mean that something is real. I think we can all agree agree to that. No matter where we fall in the political spectrum, I can't think of anyone who's just so thrilled with every law we've ever passed. Yeah, there, there was a law against witchcraft at one point. You know, yeah. moldy bread, yeah, moldy yeah, bread. Yeah. Um, but um, with that said, there. We have gone through and done some scientific research on this uh, using a couple different methods. Um, we've done research using self-reported methods, yeah, playing subliminal messages to people and then asking them what they thought. We've used it uh, using direct action methods where we play subliminal messages to people, ask them to do something and see how it affects them. Excuse me. And we've also used EKG. Um, which basically you put a, a bunch of little, uh, uh, how's it? EK MRI is the one where you go in the tube. So EKG, you put a little, a, a bunch of little electrodes all over the head, and I forget what EKG, EKG is. Electrocardiogram. E it's your heart. E e e EKG. Electroencephalogram. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I, I knew yeah. I was saying it wrong, but yeah, you, the, the, they use the EEG, and and they measured activity in the brain, and when a stimuli starts to light up different areas of the brain, and using this, they found some surprising results first of all um they they very narrowly defined what subliminal messages were um to things that are less than for visual stimuli i think there's some audio stimuli we can talk about later but for visual stimuli things that are less than 13 milliseconds they determined using the eeg that 13 milliseconds was a threshold in which your conscious mind registers something so it had to be less than 13 milliseconds. And they found that using these techniques, they can persuade people in very specific ways for very short amounts of time. Well, they also, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they, that they found that they could persuade people to do something that they might already have a tendency to do yeah. at, a, at, at a greater rate. But they can't persuade somebody to do something that they were determined not to do. Correct. Yeah, if they were going to, if they were going to buy a soda, and they didn't already have a strong preference for one or the other, they could persuade them for a very brief period of time, like that particular instant that was about to happen of them buying a soda for Pepsi over Coke. Yeah, and it has to be a brand they are familiar yeah. with. Yeah. But don't already have strong feelings about one way or another. So, you know, when we talk about a short period of time, this may be a great technique for a movie theater to use on a TV that is playing right there in the checkout line, right? Yeah. yeah. But then we have to ask questions of why do that? Because we also know that just playing a Coca-Cola ad on the TV yeah, yeah. right there in the checkout line is much more effective. Yeah. Me messaging works better than subliminal messaging. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, they, they've also found that, you know, like you mentioned earlier, it has to be something they're already doing. So you can't like play a message like go kill the president. You're like, oh shit, I should totally go kill the president now. It has to be something that's just a, a slight. Don't, of... don't kill the president. That was neither a subliminal message <laughs> or an actual message. I want to throw that out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it wouldn't work unless you were already going to do this. So it's not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, but, so, but it, it's a very narrow scope of things for, for this type of messaging, uh, specifically with visual. Now there's been some other kind of groups of messages that have kind of got swept up into this idea of subliminal messaging. I know one of them was, you talked about the audio one. I don't even remember the name of that. Back one. masking. Yeah. Back uh, masking. Yeah. I'm an old, uh, I, I'm an old rock and roll history geek, you know, and I, I grew up with all these messages, you know, hearing about these messages, and I've gone through and listened to them where, uh, you know, uh, on the Beatles records, you can hear I Buried Paul when you play, uh, I think it's Strawberry Fields Forever that you play play backwards, or, uh, or maybe I Am the Walrus, I can't remember, but there's all kinds of messages out there. Uh, by the way, those are, the, the, those are scientifically bullshit most of the time uh yeah you, you've got to be conditioned to hear them if you just play them nobody hears it you got if you tell them what they what they're supposed to hear they can hear it yeah there's a uh, really interesting video i'll put a link um and so, may maybe something on screen for for the youtube viewers there's a ted talk that's fascinating about it yeah and he goes through and he plays a whole bunch of these things 
And he, he'll play them like five or six times and yep. say, tell me what you heard. What'd you, did anyone hear anything? You're and, like, that's... Yeah, and then they tell you what you're supposed to hear, and it's crystal clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. right there. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, I can't think of his name, but uh, he, he's, a, he's a pretty brilliant guy. Um, but, you know, I, I can remember, and I was, I was talking with you all about this earlier, that I can remember watching this video years ago, watching this show years ago, and I, I couldn't find it, but I could find uh, all kinds of people spe- talking about it. Uh, of a John Lennon interview a year or two before he died, and they asked John Lennon, "Did you in fact put uh, put subliminal messages?" And for years, the Beatles had denied that they did this. You know, there were all these people that, that that heard these messages. They denied they were there. And all of a sudden, John Lennon came out, and John Lennon said, "Yes, we did put subliminal messages on it." And they said, "Well, well, why did you do that? Were you trying to convince somebody of something?" And his response was. Well, when you put the needle on the record and you play the record backwards, it scratches the record. So they have to go buy another record. <laughs> so we put these messages so these people would play the record backwards, scratch it, and it, it was a way to sell more records. Possibly the most effective subliminal message the ever used. Greatest subliminal message ever. Because <laughs> uh, I can remember being a, you know, this 10-year-old kid playing my records backwards to try and hear this <laughs> stuff. You know, uh, Back before you could just do it, do it I digitally. I would have been so pissed if I was your mother. Oh, back, my mom was upset, yeah. Back before the Betamax. Before the Betamax. Actually, about the same time as the okay. Betamax. <laughs> oh, Lord, you make me feel old. Uh, did either one of you even own record players? What? No. Mine. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought about buying one from a secondhand shop one time just so that I could see what it was like. Yeah. You did. <laughs> <laughs> My mother. You thought about buying one in the same way that somebody like 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 buys vintage clothing. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. My mother has some still to this day. It, it, they stored in my closet. I have this huge closet, so it was like extra storage space in the house. And then she had I don't know what they're called the the small ones. Forty fives. She had forty fives, yeah. and she had this little this little thing. You like you twist the top, and it came up, yes, and it was yeah. a stack of forty fives. You know what that was? I don't know what it was called, but yes, I had one. No, you know what it was in our what house? What was that? That was a doorstop. Oh, dear We God. used that to hold the door. <laughs> and there was a record player somewhere in the room. that's what that was. Yeah, that's what that that's thing is. Yeah, that's... I, I want you to know that you and your entire family are going to hell. Okay? All right. Hold so... on. Does that include my marriage? Yeah. Well, no, I, I didn't just, condone it. I just found out that you weren't aware that's what, okay. what it was. Okay, good. <laughs> Although you're going to hell for not knowing what it was when you saw it. So I'll, uh, I'll tell you, okay, for fine. like the first, you know, 12 years of my life, I didn't know either. And one day I was fidgeting with an open. I was like, there's things in here. There's a hidden treasure in this. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so so the idea of these, these this back masking, uh, by the way, there is there is. There is zero scientific evidence right, that, that you right. that, that you would hear, and it, it doesn't even really make sense that that you that you'll hear something that is played backwards. I mean, you're how, how does that even work? How 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 could your brain not only hear it below the level, but then flip it around backwards so you understand it? Yeah. Huh, there was a song by Missy Elliott that supposedly, like, it sounded like gibberish, but supposedly, if you played it backwards, it sounded right forward. Does anybody here know if that was real? What? I, I haven't heard the Missy Elliott one. I know that there was a there was, was a, there was a Britney Spears one years ago one. where uh, a, 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 you know she when she was a minor where apparently when you played it backwards it said something to the effect of you know I'm not too young for you to have sex with or something oh like that. But I, I was listening <laughs> That's to, funny. I was listening to a, a YouTube video on this and they played it and even when they told me what it said I couldn't hear it. So see if I'd have thought that would have worked I would have started releasing music with that all, all in my yeah. <laughs> no, Seriously, guys. Seriously, it's okay. Have sex with me. That is awful. <laughs> so, uh, so for back masking, bullshit? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think back masking is bullshit. Um, uh, and now, how about the idea of, of just playing something uh, underneath the level of a song that the thought is, you know, that your subconscious will pick it up, but your conscious won't. There, there is a whole industry out there of these hypnosis oh. uh, uh uh, videos and, 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 and songs that you can listen to in your car and you're supposed to be super successful because there's yeah. these motivational messages uh, underneath. In fact, there's an app. I downloaded it on iTunes because it was free and I wanted to see how it would work where you play your uh, your favorite song or whatever and then it's got all these motivational me- or you can record your own and you can set the, set the sound so it plays underneath it all and the thought is you'll never hear it but it'll, you'll you'll you know, you'll be successful because yeah. of this. I think it's real. I, and I'm being serious. I, I mean, I, I'm not joking. Um, so so here's my reasoning on that. As far as I understand, and, and I'm sure there's some some people on both sides of this issue who are, who are going to be yelling and screaming about what I'm about to say. But the biggest thing about self-help 
isn't what's in the self-help with maybe one or two exceptions. The biggest thing is that you actually seek self-help and immerse yourself in the self-help, right? Yeah, yeah. So with that said, it's it's kind of a placebo effect, but if placebo can cure cancer, why not take it, right? Yeah, yeah. So with that said, I think it's just the next level of that of why even have to deal with the gibberish they're saying? Why not just invent your own self-help in your head? And it's just a meditation. That's what they're doing. But it's just a meditation time when you're setting this block of time aside. You're going to play this noise that's too quiet for you to hear, and but you're going to be thinking actively. So I think it works. Okay, maybe, maybe. I, I, I'll be honest. I've listened to self-help stuff. I've listened to stuff like that because I want... To, but, but the same thing happens. A lot of but times... But you're it's, listening to I'm it. I'm listening to it consciously. Yeah. And a lot of times it's there... As you said, it's not for me to learn anything. It's kind of to remind me that I need to be thinking about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and, it, and you know, it and has I think worked. that's valid. I, I think, think that that's valid. completely valid. But I, I, I don't. Th- I have a hard time believing that you can hide a message so low that your conscious mind can't hear it. Yeah, I think their reasoning is bullshit. But I think the effect, the overall. Okay. I, I, okay. I, I can go with that. I can go with that. Uh, yeah. I, I kind of wish it worked. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like but, not to have to listen to that bullshit. Can you do that studying for tests? Just like turn the lessons way low and just generally absorb history. I, I would have tried that when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, I used to I, I used to record my not subliminal, but I used to record reading my lecture notes back. And I drove forty five minutes to school and would listen to my lecture notes uh, while I'm driving, mm-hmm. uh, and that worked. So you know, if I could have put that underneath Led Zeppelin, everything would have been great. Right. Yeah. My problem is I think it would have worked backwards, and I would have showed up for the test fully prepared to give you all of the lyrics to Led Zeppelin's Stairway <laughs> to Heaven. Is that really such a bad lesson? Yeah, that, that's, that's a wonderful thing, yeah. you know? So uh, who knows? You want to talk about this beer? Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Because uh, I'm a little surprised. I don't want to go first this week, but I do want to talk about it. So okay. who wants to go first? John? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got volunteered. Voluntold, John. Voluntold. Get it right. Okay. I got voluntold that I'm going to say it like that. Anyway... <laughs> hmm. I really like this beer, and I've I've not found anything from Dogfish Head that I've not been a fan of, and part of that may be a, a kind of placebo effect where um, I I've read their books, I've been a fan of what they've done and everything, so I may just be having an emotional attachment to this. Um, but I, I really like it. It's 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 not going to be your traditional IPA though. This one I feel like they stuck a little more to the standard than they have in a lot of their other beers. You'll recognize it as an IPA. Yeah. yeah. But th- they talk about a little bit of the process on the box. You can read through it, but more or less that they go back after they make the IPA and they they rehop it with like a, a bunch of different kinds of hops, and you get this really interesting mix of IPA and almost like fruit in there, like a. I, t- I taste like almost a blueberry in the beer. And, and it's, it's definitely not because they squeeze blueberries in there. You can tell that from the taste. It's the way the flavors and the hops are interacting. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying this beer. There's something sweet in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something different. And, and you know, that, that's been Dogfish Head's whole um, philosophy around their beers. That's their shtick, yeah. Yeah, we're not trying to follow the standards. We're trying to make interesting beer for interesting people. That's kind of their little sl- slogan. I think they made an interesting beer. I don't know if I'm interested enough to have it, but I'm definitely enjoying it. I'm going to give this a 3.2. 3.2. Uh, Anna, you or me? Rating. It doesn't matter to me. Go ahead. Okay. I like this beer. Um, sorry, I just t- kind of whapped the table with my phone. Um, I like it a lot. From the first sip, I was surprised and really, really enjoyed it. Um, it it's distinctly hoppy, but... <clears throat> It's not so hoppy that it's hard to drink, which I think Mm -hmm. is part of the problem that a lot of people have when they're making their IPAs. Um, And I think that's a a lot of the reason that people who don't like IPAs don't like IPAs. Um, This one, I think, does a really good job of being really, really hoppy, um, like you expect an IPA to be, but having some complexity beyond that. The thing you mentioned, you can tell... Um, several different hop profiles going yeah, on. I yeah. think it, it does contribute significantly to some some more complex flavors within the beer. The thing that I love the most um, out of the whole thing is the very floral element to it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's kind of sweet, but it's not. It, it's really effectively balanced with the bitter, almost tangy of tanginess of the hops. I really like it a lot. So. Um, it, it's funny, 
I was actually going to rate this a 3.5, and I'm surprised to be coming in above you on this rating. You know, I, I, I was really torn on my rating. I, 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 I'm ready to give Dogfish Head a 4 all the time. Uh, so I was really trying to temper myself and be honest. Uh, whether it's a 3.2 or a 3.5, it's delicious. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was all set here to come in and w- w- with my, my traditional statement of, uh, you know, I don't like IPAs. Uh, uh, but, but I can't say that anymore mm-hmm. because I, I've, I've been saying that over and over again. The last three or four IPAs you brought have been very good to me. So mm-hmm. I, I can say I, I, I like IPAs now. I don't know what the fuck y'all have done to me. but uh, <laughs> I but, don't think it's but, that. Uh, but but it, it, it's uh, I, I think there's there's something that that I've, I've come accustomed to it. I like that I like that hoppiness now that I didn't used to. Now mm-hmm. I still don't want that. I don't want that strong IPA that that stays with you. I'll tell you what I like about this beer is you've got that bitterness, but you, it doesn't hang with you for for minutes afterwards like like some of them do. Mm-hmm. It's there and it's and it's just kind of it, it's not gone immediately, but it just kind of fades out pretty quickly. And I like that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned that you could get get blueberries in there. I, I don't catch that, but I can taste a I can taste a, taste a pretty distinct orange peel feel in here. Yeah, and I, I don't I think that's where I was getting the tanginess. Yeah, that tanginess, and, and, and I don't think they put it in here. I think it's I think it's an effect of the hops, mm. uh, and and whatever they did here to to to, uh, to make that was done to me almost perfect. Yeah, this has got a uh, it's got just enough bitterness that you can feel it. It's sweet enough that it that it's enjoyable. It it's almost got like a holiday beer taste with the with the the spices and all throughout it. It's not it's not over the like top. Like what fruitcake should taste like. Yeah, it's not over the top like like some so many of these holiday beers. But I think that this could really easily be a great Christmas beer. You yeah. know, it's it's right there with it. If I'm going to give it anything, uh, any kind of a hit, and I don't even know if it's really a hit, it's that I would like it to be a little heavier. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a it's a thin beer, mm-hmm. but I think it's intentionally a thin beer. Mm-hmm. So that's something that that I think they're they're going for. They're not going for that thick beer that you're having out by the campfire. They're going for something thin that you can drink with your friends. Yeah. And they were super successful at that. Um, I am going to do something really odd here, and that's that I. My first gut instinct was that this was a three-two, but I'm going to do something weird because the the the, the title and the, the the packaging and everything is so perfect on here, and it does so much for me that if I saw this, I would buy it just for that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it an extra point just for that. I'm oh going to go three-three. Nice. Three. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like not a whole one. point. Oh, not, like, not, yeah, not a whole okay. point. Yeah, but I, 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 I'm, I mean, I think that's part of the experience of yeah, the beer, it is. Yeah. and that is that is done so well. That it adds to the enjoyment. So three, three, very, very cool, awesome. Which is weird because on an IPA, I always come in the lowest, and, yeah. I, and I'm just not on this one. This yeah. is this is so good. I, I feel I've abandoned my post of, yeah. of the IPA champion. Yeah. Uh, well, and I feel like uh, I feel like I've sold out my soul to the yeah. devil. So. Well, and here's the deal: I I genuinely think that the um, IPA industry is changing, and I and I I guess I specify IPA industry. That's in air quotes, um, just because. I think that when people were introduced to it, they just kind of crammed everything in there that they could. And it was almost a race to make the hoppiest beer that you possibly could. I agree. And I think people got kind of burnt out on that. Thank goodness. And people still, they remember IPAs whenever they first started trying them before they got kind of over overblown. Um, and they want that back, but they want something crafty and uh, of high quality and that's what we're starting to see now i think the difference is that what you have here is you have something that is intentionally going through that 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 ipa process to make a good flavor in comparison to the original ipas where uh you you know where the 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 brits were 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 hopping it up just for uh, preservation purposes yeah and you had to put so much in it to do it yeah this is they're not doing this to preserve it they're doing this to add a a flavor right and that that there's something there's a different mentality and a different outcome there Mm -hmm. so um it, it, in fact, so much so that I, I'm not even sure I would call it IPA. I think it's I think there's something else. I don't think it's an India pale ale. I think it's just you know a hoppy pale ale. Mm-hmm. You know, there's okay. there's something a little different there. Um, so good beer. Very Go get this. Enjoy yes. it. Um, and keep the bottle because it's cool. 
I want the I want a poster of this. It is really cool. We need to we need to put some of that on Instagram. Plus, I, I need to start getting a picture of the beer to put on our videos. Yeah, so I, we'll I want a poster of this on the wall, and I want to play like Grateful Dead music while I listen to it. I think it would be perfect. Yeah, I actually already Instagrammed the dog during the show. She's been staring at, for, at me for like the last <laughs> twenty minutes through the the French doors. The over dog here. or the dog fish head? Uh, the dog. Oh, the actual like, dog. Yeah, just staring at me. No blinking. Just no, outside of the she's camera. She's not looking away. Yeah. <laughs> she's just like right there angry because she's not in here. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about something that may or may you know, not be sad. may or may not be in the, the 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 wheelhouse of this. It kind of depends on which way you look at it. But let me ask you, is is it subliminal if when you go to the uh when you go to the mall at, at, at you know after Thanksgiving, Christmas season and they're playing Christmas music to and we we've seen lots of evidence that the, the playing of the music and all that does encourage people to spend more money. Is yeah. that subliminal? So, no. so there, there's two answers there, right? There's, there's the answer science has adopted, and then the answer I want to argue here in a little bit. The first answer to the science question is no. Uh, that They've actually made a new category for that. They call it uh, superliminal. Superliminal, yeah. Yeah, and, and superliminal messaging uh, goes into a wide range of things. What's on the label? You were talking about the label. Uh, whether you're playing fast or slow music in the background, whether you're putting products at eye level, whether you're putting products out on a separate display. I mean, there is a whole vast uh, array of, of, of superliminal messages that is that are recognized and scientifically proven to work, but they don't consider it subliminal because it was present long enough to be registered by the conscious mind. Exactly. Here's my argument with that, Okay. My argument with that is you, when you make that, you are making a strong assertion about the consciousness problem, about the philosophical consciousness problem. Okay. So Anna's shaking her head over here. No, you're not. Um, so if you sit there and say that if it's over 13 milliseconds, it's instantly registered by the conscious mind. You're making a pretty strong statement about what the conscious mind is and how it perceives things. Yeah, but uh, he, here's here's my, my issue with it. Uh, and and I, like, I like the superliminal idea here. But here, here's the idea is, yes, your conscious mind is, is picking up, look, there's Christmas music and there's the smells of Christmas and there's cinnamon and all this. Your conscious mind is picking that up. But isn't your subconscious mind associating that with "I need to buy stuff because it's Christmas time"? They're not. Com they're not saying buy this. They're just playing music. But subconsciously, but, but, but I think what they're what they're saying here is they're 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 going into your your, your lizard brain there and saying uh, your you know, lizard brain. Yeah, yeah. You know your your your, your sub reptilian brain back there, and they're they're saying this means this to you. That's subliminal, isn't it? Well, I I think we need. You to were have in a store. Huh? You were in a store. Well, but you're still there, there. There's still something else there. We have we have seen where where uh, you know malls will. Well, let's look at Disney. When you walk mm -hmm. down Main Street at Disney, they pipe pipe out uh, smells of like apple pies and stuff to make you feel like this. And they have discovered that that increases the sale of stuff because it makes you feel at home. That's I mean, is, is that not? Uh, you know, they're not piping something out and saying, buy this. They're piping out this stuff to make you comfortable, and you are associating that with something. See, and I don't think that it is, because I think a key part of subliminal messaging is that you are so unaware of it that you cannot, uh, you can't circumvent it yourself. We know. But that's not the definition of, of it, that you cannot. The definition is that you already have to have a tendency to do it to, to, for it to work. No, it's not. But 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 you're you're even making a, a strong assertions now about the conscious mind when you say that that we, we define it by you, you can't work your way around it. You can use the consciousness problem to to completely. There's no reason to even be discussing this at all with regard to the consciousness problem. But but but. You're saying you can use your conscious mind to work around it. And I'm sorry. Yeah, this whole thing is based in the idea that consciousness is a thing. So what I'm saying, you're saying you can use your conscious mind to work around it. And I'm sorry. There are some people who, if you told me right now that I was going to die 
unless I could I cut myself open and and performed an appen, uh, uh, appendectomy appendectomy on myself. I cannot conscious myself into doing that. Now, is there somebody who can possibly? I, I, in fact, we, we, we've seen it, seen the same case in that. But we know there are things that are so hardwired into you that you just go them. You put your hand on a hot stove, even knowingly, like I stick my hand on it, you pull your hand away. Nobody leaves their hand in the fire, right? Yet nobody calls that subconscious. Nobody says that that was a subconscious thing that happened to you. <coughs> so your whole definition has already... Uh, uh, starting to leak water. No, it hasn't. Um, because I think that some would argue that that is subconscious. It is not your conscious mind that is causing you to pull your hand away. It is an involuntary action. And an involuntary action is one that is not a decision that is actively made in your mind. It's after 13 milliseconds if, if you ask science. Screw science. That is for visual stimulation. Okay, we're talking fair. about smells, we're talking about sounds, we're talking about, well, feeling, I guess, on the stove. That is very specific to visual stimulation. Fair enough, fair so enough. You, you, so, so, so you would say that, 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 that there is no subconscious uh, uh, effect to playing, uh, playing Christmas music and putting, put, putting smells out? I think there is, but what I'm saying is that your consciousness has the ability to recognize it and the ability to circumvent it. But, uh, when, uh, when, when you smell cookies wafting out, you're in the mall and you smell cookies, they're attempting to distribute that smell so that you will come and buy them. But yeah. you can be consciously aware enough to not do that, to not succumb to oh, I, the I, messaging that they're I, doing. I agree that, that that you can consciously prevent something, but I just I disagree that 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 uh, subliminal messaging or subconscious messaging is something that you can't avoid. I I, I think the definition of it says quite clearly that it has a, it, it increases your tendency to do something that you otherwise would have done anyway. Well, subliminal means below the threshold. It is below the threshold of recognition. Okay. And but, if you if it is below the threshold of recognition, then how is it that you can consciously avoid it? But 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 the definition says that you can consciously avoid it. The de the very definition no. the very definition of it says that it can only make you do something that you otherwise That's not had a, a tendency definition. To do. That those are the results found from a study. Okay, well, okay, then we'll go with that. The results of the study say that you can it, it can only make you do something that you otherwise would do. It can't make you kill the president. It mm -hmm. can't make you do something that that, that you are uh, uh, emotionally or, or or intellectually incapable of doing. Mm -hmm. It makes you do something that. That you might have done otherwise, right. it increases your 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 uh, uh, possibility of it. Just like you know, the you could buy Coke instead of Dr Pepper because right. you don't have a, have a brand loyalty. I think that if that when you're uh, in a mall and there's Christmas music playing and there's the smell of cookies, yes, you're consciously you're consciously going. I smell cookies. I hear Christmas music, but I think subconsciously your mind associates that with grandma's house smells like this at Christmas. I need to go buy gifts. Now, can you, can you avoid it? Yes, you absolutely can avoid it. But does it increase your likelihood of spending if you were already there to spend? I think it does. Yeah. Well, and, and we've already talked about the fact that, or, or touched on, I guess, very briefly, the fact that messaging is far more effective than subliminal messaging. Um, and I think that part of that is the consciousness aspect of it. The fact that your conscious mind does have access to it. Okay. But I, I, I don't think that we can just throw... Because essentially what you're doing when you say that is that every single bit of advertising, uh, marketing, placement is subliminal messaging. Literally everything. Everything falls under that when you're talking about that. And then, okay, fine. Well, no, I, I don't think it does. Yes, it does. 
Oh, it does then. Okay. Well, the <laughs> show's over, guys. Uh, let's Tell do the wrap-up. Tell me something wrap up. that doesn't then. Okay. So I, I think in order to talk about this, uh, we need to talk about types of subconscious mind because... To, to, no, to no, 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 no. Even the conscious mind is covered in this, remember? So anyway, that's the show, guys. We're wrapping it up. <laughs> okay. Um, we need to talk about the types of subconscious mind because let's say subconscious mind and then group that into like this one ball and then say... There's these two parts of your brain, and all, and that's all they do. It, it, it's really disingenuous to the conversation. Um, first of all, uh, we know, going back to visual stimuli, that your, your brain processes visual stimuli uh, in multiple layers. Um, there's a part of your brain that gets the whole image and then recognizes hard edges. And then there's a part of your brain that recognizes colors. And there's a part of your brain that takes those those hard lines and colors and pulls out known objects like faces. There's a specific part of your brain that just deals with faces. Yeah, yeah. And all that information is fed together into your conscious mind. So all those little compartments are a piece of subconscious mind that, that are going on. On top of that, you have other parts of subconscious mind that deal with output. For instance, most of the time when you're running, uh, you're not thinking... Pick up left leg, bend this knee, extend it out. You're thinking, run. No, I'm thinking there's somebody chasing me, but yeah. That's the only reason I'm running these days. And your subconscious mind is using muscle memory to deal with the little bitty movements going in between. When you're playing piano, you're you're thinking, okay, I need to go up this high note. I need to get ready for this transition. But for the most part, your fingers are doing the walking. That is subconscious mind. Uh, there's also instant response subconscious mind. So you're sitting there working on grading papers and the kid comes up to you and says, uh, can I, um, you know, can, can, can I go to Joey's house? And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, jo why are you going to Joey's house, right? It's that instant response. So you, you, you have these two kinds of brain, and, and this has been studied extensively. You have these two kinds of brain that respond all the time. There is the, 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 uh, Instant memory brain, the kind where you're shooting pool and you go up and you just shoot the shot a hundred times where you weren't thinking about it. You're like, oh, if I'd have just thought for a second longer, I'd have played it a little bit differently. Versus... You've obviously been watching me play pool. Yeah, exactly. Versus the thinking mind, which is, is your more conscious mind. All of those different kinds are subconscious. They are below your conscious level of involvement. And so if, if we're going to talk about your subconscious mind receiving messages, I think there's different amount of value uh, given to, uh, I saw the outline of a cookie and my brain instantly wanted to buy a cookie. And uh, your brain knows, well, about Christmas time, I buy cookies. And you're walking by and some Girl Scout says, I know they don't sell them Christmas. I'm just throwing an example. You want to buy cookies? And you say, yeah. Okay, I think those are two different kinds of things that both deal with subconscious minds. Now, yeah. your conscious mind may come through and say, oh, wait, I forgot, I'm broke. And then say, oh, I can't, I can't this week. But those are both subconscious mind uh, phenomena. Yeah, my, my conscious mind often forgets I'm broke. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You still haven't made an argument for why literally every bit of advertisement doesn't fall under subliminal. Why literally every type of... Uh, because once in my whole life, I saw an ad and I had a conscious thought about it. Like, you know what? They really want me to drink Coke, but it tastes like ass. And then at that one moment, that wasn't subliminal. That just Done. means it didn't work. What? I'm very offended that you think Coke tastes like ass. But, uh, I, I don't understand what you're saying. I, I, I really... You just pointed out how it didn't work. Working wasn't a qualification of advertising being subliminal a few no, minutes I ago. I don't, I don't think every, every piece of advertising is subliminal. I think, I think informative advertising that comes out and tells you, you know, this is a new product. It's a good product. This is what it does. is not subliminal. That I, doesn't well, – I that, guess I haven't seen that. That does happen. It happens a lot. Um, uh, informative advertising, it, it's out there yeah. all the time. Uh, but – And you don't think that they're using – the type of text to appeal to a certain demographic, the voice, uh, well, the not, colors, yeah. the arrangement, any maybe, of that? Maybe, maybe, but, but, I, but I think it's all, it, it is so much on the surface that, that it's not subliminal. Well, I think that is totally different, totally different from I'm playing music. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm not, uh, I, I'm not uh, uh, 
you know, calling, putting a call to action. There's nothing there except there's this pretty music back there that you've heard every year at Christmas, and I'm, I'm associating that with at Christmas. We, you know, we listen to this. Well, and, and Bing Crosby singing "White Christmas." That's what my grandmother plays whenever, uh, whenever we're opening gifts at Christmas. So now I want to go buy gifts, and I miss my grandmother. Damn it! So a poster of a hot girl. Holding has me sold already. Yeah, exactly. Holding a bottle of Coca Cola that just says Coca Cola on it. Is that or is that not subliminal advertising? No, I would say it's not. They're using no, ke- no. sexual cues yeah, but, but, to try to. But they're giving you a product. They're they're they're, they're saying, look, this is this is a sexy lady, and here is the product that associates with it. That is different from. You walk in the mall and there's Christmas music playing. The music is not saying, you know, go to Victoria's Secret and buy her secret. It's mm-hmm. not the, the 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 smell of the cookies is not coming out saying go down to Famous Amos and buy yourself a cookie. Is Famous Amos even open anymore? I don't I have know. No idea. But uh, it's not it's not saying that. It's just you're just associating. I hear this sound and I I I, I smell this every year at Christmas and now I'm I'm thinking I need to go so buy something. So playing Christmas music. At Christmas time is subliminal advertising or subliminal messaging. Well, personally, I don't think subliminal messaging really works, but I but 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 I think it's I think it I think it meets their definition. It meets the definition of it. I don't think it does. So, so you know, a couple points here. First of all, I could literally walk through the mall with my phone playing Christmas music, and it's not subliminal messaging. Or is it? I, I don't think sure so. it's subliminal for yeah, something. Yeah, for something, <laughs> yeah, but. but um, so I, I think this point need, needs to be stated. Uh, you can't have conscious messaging without subliminal, right? Because every single thing, whether I'm looking at a, a, an object across the room, that first had to hit my subconscious, get processed through before it hit my conscious, right? So, I mean, if you want to argue from that perspective that everything passes through, uh, I, I don't think that's subliminal messaging. Here's here's the distinguishment I would make. If... Um, Oh, Jobs, Steve Jobs, is going through and launching the latest app product. I know he's dead now. That would but be really impressive yes. at this point. Yeah, yeah that, that, would be, that would be great advertisement. But he's, <laughs> he's going through and he's launching his latest Apple product. And he is talking about all the great benefits of that app product. I don't think that's subliminal messaging. Here's what I think is subliminal messaging. If he goes through and pays 10,000 people to show up and cheer whenever a little light comes on to to give this positive effect to to pay for um, a, a, a social confirmation that isn't real, if he's faking that, now I think we're starting to get into subliminal messaging. I don't I don't know that that's even subliminal because because you you're, you're, you've got the product there, the product lights up and everybody cheers. There's a product there. I think what might be subliminal, uh, I don't know how you do it with Apple, but, uh, you know, the logo, if, if, if the logo appears, you know, on somewhere it shouldn't appear and it, it encourage you to do something that, that would be subliminal to me. If you're walking down the mall and all of a sudden there's just the Apple logo, it doesn't tell you to do anything. It's just there. That's, that's something that's there. Maybe, uh, uh, and I, I, you know, I don't even think that does it. I, honestly, not, okay. I was gonna it. say because the Coke I'm thing just, earlier I, yeah, didn't yeah, wasn't subliminal. Yeah, no, no, I don't think it is. Now that I think about it, I'm, okay. I'm trying to find a way to make it subliminal, and I, I can't find a way to make well, that. Well, that's why the line that I draw is that subliminal messaging is mes- messaging that is never intended to be interpreted by your conscious, Con- conscious. Mind. Okay, and, and and again, I think. I'm not arguing that subliminal messages work a lot of times. I don't think they do a lot of times. But but I but, but if you accept if you accept that that uh, you know Christmas music is and and again I'm not sure I do. That's why I keep asking the question. If you accept that that is subliminal because it is uh, you know it's not telling you to do something, but it, but it's at the conscious level. I don't know if it is or not. I don't understand enough enough to say. But if you accept that that is, then, then subliminal messages work at, at that level. Yeah. Uh, I don't think hiding messages works. Well, and, and you talk about playing music. Is it subliminal? Not just to play music. I mean, you expect yeah. to go in the mall and hear music. When they choose on Black Friday to play fast music to keep people moving fast. Yep. And on Christmas, 
you know, three days before Christmas to play slow mu music so people move slowly through the aisles with an intended action taken by the person. Is the that slight difference in 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 the the music they choose subliminal messaging? Yeah, I don't know, but I, I know it has an effect. I don't know if it's subliminal yeah. or not. Yeah. Uh, if you don't think it has an effect, get in your car one day and and, and change the change the music. I will find myself. I'll put on Ted Nugent and I look down and I'm driving 85 miles an hour because that's what the music calls for. Right. I put on Sinatra and I look down and I'm getting passed by Granny in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there, there's something there that affects you. I don't know if that it's subliminal. Um, I think I think where I come down if, 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 after all this discussion is that if the you know if your definition of subliminal is that it has to happen entirely below the consciousness where you're not aware of it. I don't think it works. But I think if your idea of subliminal is, you know, uh, keying into that lizard mind there by playing something that, that, that you associate with something, I think it does work. I just don't know what the def what the correct definition is of it. I think there are two cases where it works. And one we haven't even talked about in this show yet. Maybe we, we can dive into it some. One is the one we talked about earlier. You know, you're going to go buy a soda anyway. Should it be Pepsi or Coke for a very short period of time? Uh, the other thing where I think it works really well is uh, in, in trust recognition, right? If uh, you see uh, really short instances of, um, let's say, a face, someone's face. You see it over and over and over. Now, it doesn't work as well as overt messaging, but you see it over and over and over. We know that that, that recognition sense is processed at a subconscious level. You recognize somebody before your conscious mind processes it. And we've all experienced this before. You look over, you're just glancing by, you're glancing across crowd. Wow, that was a horrible audio thing, but you're glancing across cloud, a crowd, not a cloud. <laughs> exactly. If you're glancing across a cloud, we have something else happening. <laughs> well, it happens with clouds too. You see castles <laughs> in the clouds, but anyway, you're, you're glancing across a crowd and all of a sudden you look back and do a double take. Is that Sean? And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But that, that recognition happens at a subconscious level. So I, I, yeah. I think from a recognition standpoint, you could recognize something that you've not consciously processed I, yet. I, I think that would be the same thing that makes us see faces in places there's not faces. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, man, the man on the moon, the face on the side of a mountain, the clouds, the clouds making a giant boob. I know yeah. the rest of you saw mountains. I always yeah. see a giant boob. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's a... a you know, that's a subconscious and, thing. And then I think there's a question of intent of can you then take that and capitalize on it and make people do stuff with it? Or is it just like, oh, yeah, I recognize that face. I don't know where, but, I, you know, does that really play into anything? I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I, I think that's a phenomenon that is real and exists. I have to say that, that, that if I'd have studied this and I've read a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks on this stuff, and, and came out of this believing that subconscious messages work, that you really could, um, uh, you know, change people's minds by hiding something, uh, then, then we would have hid something in here, and next week we'd have been the number one show on uh, on, on all podcasts. Well, that, well, I mean, they'd have to listen first before they got the message. That's why we're not the number one show. If you listen to the number one show, they do all that. They do and all that's... that. That's right. See, this is non-subliminal messaging. We're not part of the secret organization of subliminal message makers. That's why you should listen only to us. Buy shirts. Buy shirts. But buy yeah, shirts. so I, I don't think that subliminal messaging works. Send me pictures of your boobs. As I've defined it. Um, nice, Mike. I'm um, trying here. I'm this, doing what I can. This is probably the best time in history to do that. <laughs> this, is, this has got to be. Yeah. But anyway, I don't think that subliminal messaging works um, in the way that I've defined it, um, except for the very specific instances that have been demonstrated um, in a reasonably controlled fashion. When you're already going to make a decision and it pushes you one way or another toward a product that you don't have either positive or strong feelings toward, um, or a brand that you don't have positive or negative feelings toward. Um, if we define it like you guys seem to be defining it, where it covers things that are noticeable by the conscious, then duh, it works. But um, from everything I was looking at, that is a completely different uh, category of yeah, messaging. I, I, I think it definitely falls under supra, not 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 under sub. Well, see, and I like the one I found better. It was a uh, neuro advertising. I didn't see that anywhere. I, yeah. I saw I saw the Supra uh, uh, 
Well, and I was looking at some stuff um, across the pond, and they were calling it neuro advertising. So maybe there's a they don't get a cultural right. distance they there. Well, and they the lost their whole, they there. lost their whole damn empire. Don't don't listen well, to them. Yeah. Well, and, and something li- some, right. something to your I point. Of I'm not going to make the political. I think argument. we just lost all of our listeners we over have, there. We had a bunch over there. We did. We did. Yeah. Until Mike. I just screwed it all up. What, so John? the red coats have left. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is, is between the three of us, we've lost like Montana, uh, the, the everywhere, whole, the whole, basically. We've lost everywhere. Yes. Yeah. It's just We're us. talking to ourselves, but but it's interesting, and and this isn't a scientific argument by any means. You know, this gets back to the legislature, but in their subliminal advertisement uh, legislation, they actually outlawed something that wouldn't fall under your definition of subliminal uh, advertising, and that's like putting people in the background and scenes that are wearing a shirt for like Coca-Cola yeah. as kind of, you know, subliminal because you're painting to the scene. It's just kind of in the background, but mm-hmm. that wouldn't, you know, fall under what That's you illegal. Would, yeah, it's illegal in, in, in Australia and England. But it's not here. Yeah. Not because in, I see it right. all the time here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's product placement here. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Consumerism stuff. is at its finest. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Swedish bikini team uh, sold me a lot of beer back in the 80s. So. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. Personally nice. or? Yes. They, they went were... door to door in between bikini season. Here's, I mean, uh, here's the problem. Here's was the problem. It Swedish bikini there was this, season? There was, this, there was this great ser- series Did of you, commercials. Did you? Hold on. You called them the Swedish bikini team? Yes. There was this great series of commercials in Very the 80s. Cold there. I am trying to explain something to you here. And Did y'all they play a sport? Up. Hey, hey. Shh. No, I'm yes, confused. They wore, they wore bikinis. <laughs> they were there a was, bikini team. There was this uh, commercial. And I'm going to tell you how effective it was. It was this, this series of commercials that had the Swedish bikini team. It was these hot blondes in bikinis that went out and sold beer. And I will tell you oh, how... Oh, so they literally were. Yeah, they were on commercials selling beer. Now, here's, here's the great part. It was so effective that I bought lots of beer in the 80s. But lots it was, of shit beer. But it was so ineffective... That I can't remember what brand I was supposed to buy. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's how you got a, a taste for Rolling Rock. That's, That's what right. it was. <laughs> See, I thought you were trying to reference like the Swedish beach volleyball no, no, team no, who it, was in bikini. No, it, it was an actual. I, <laughs> it was the I bikini team. I think it was Budweiser, but I could be wrong. And they called it the Swedish bikini team, and it was a. It was. I'm, I'm going to look that up. Blondes. Uh, yeah. But like I said, I don't know. It encouraged me to buy more beer. But I didn't encourage And you definitely me. bought more beer, whether it was the right one or not. I definitely bought more beer yeah. I, uh, uh, because I was hoping to get Swedish bikini models. Um, yeah, look it up. Find it. All right. So if we beat this to death. Yes. I think so. I, That's I, what they were called, the Swedish bikini I team. I told you. I'm not lying oh to you. Oh, my goodness. And they were hot. We're going to have to put pictures of that on the video. Hold on. Old Milwaukee. Uh, you old bought Milwaukee. Old Milwaukee? No, I, I didn't buy Old Milwaukee, so it wasn't effective <laughs> at all. <laughs> Okay, I'm on your side Did now. Did you really it buy more work. beer, or was it just all the beer you were going to buy anyway, and you were just thinking about the Swedish bikini team while you did it? Maybe. It was old Milwaukee, really? Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. So let me ask the question, and, and I think we can expand this, this, this now question. Now I want to kill myself. <laughs> we, I think we can expand this question past our... They indiv- weren't even Swedish. Who cares? But... They wore bikinis. Go ahead. And they were wearing wigs. Hey, we, hey, we, shut up. Go ahead. We just bust the, the, the story of the season. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> I think I heard it here first. It broke. It broke live on Six Pack Philosophy. I, I think the question we need to ask before we close this thing out. Heard sto- old story. Is there a moralistic issue with this type of advertising? Whether we're going to call it subliminal, yeah, whether yeah. we're going to call it um, background advertising, whether we're yeah. going to call you know, is there a moral issue here? That's a good question. Um, I'm going to say that my opinion has changed. Okay. When we f- talked about this outside earlier, uh, and you mentioned that we wanted to talk about morals, I was thinking to myself the whole time, yes, it's immoral to do this because you're, cha- you're trying to change people's mind. But as we've gone through, I've come to the point that I think it is so ineffective that there's not a moral question here. Um, I think if it worked, there would be a moral question. But I think it is so ineffective, and it's, it's something that that will only change your mind to do something that you... Uh, really wanted to do anyway. Yeah. It might encourage you to do something, but it's not going to encourage you to do something that you wouldn't do. That it's not immoral. It's just it's just good capitalism. I think that there there is a moral issue, but I think the effects are so unpredictable that it excuse me it doesn't make sense to try to legislate or fix this because it we know a few of them. We know fast music makes you move faster. We know slow music makes you move slower, but. 
we find stuff. Is all that why I shouldn't listen to angry music when I'm angry? You probably just shouldn't listen to angry music, but that's a different. That's a different. Story. I like it when I'm. I driving. have like a whole playlist of music I to know. listen to when I'm angry. And it's all very angry music. I have a playlist called Pissy. Yeah. Just for that day when you're just pissed off as hell. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fairly aware when you're listening to. No, you aren't. <laughs> but anyway, I haven't listened to it in years, bitch. I know. I listen no, to it on don't. the way here. <laughs> anyway, so so I think there there is a moralistic issue here, but the problem is it's so unpredictable, and we find different things where it affects you, and in such slight ways, not not like you go out and like spend your life savings, but in such slight ways that to try to legislate this starts to get into well, why did you play that music? Because maybe you just wanted to play slow music, but maybe you intended people to move slower. And I think trying to sort out intent on all this stuff just becomes ridiculous and so much more trouble than it causes. Yeah. That just go on with your lives. You bought an extra widget, take it back to the store, you're fine. You know what's funny is you talk about this, the effect of music. And I have seen in the pool hall, you know, yeah. hanging out there, that I can change the whole mood of the pool hall by what I play on the jukebox. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see when people, I, when I used to DJ at the, at the bar, I would see when the when the crowd started getting getting loud and obnoxious, and we started getting to where it looked like their fight was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I could slow the music down, and I could change the whole mood of the place. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, there, there, there's something to that. Yeah, and if we're going to try and legislate this whole thing, do we not have to put disclaimers anytime we put on a romantic music yeah. when we have a girl in the room or yeah. something? Like that? Okay, I, I'm putting on Frank Sinatra. You might get laid. I may be whipping it out later tonight. <laughs> See, there's an age Nothing thing okay there. is there's happening an age, here. There's an yeah. age thing there because I went to Sinatra because that's actually my parents' generation. But I love Sinatra. So, so what's your sexy. thoughts on subliminal messaging? Would is Sinatra there a moral get you issue? I think that if it worked better, it would be totally. It, it would not be a thing that I would recommend a moral person to do. Mm-hmm. I don't think it is effective enough to matter. So you recommend by my definition, by y'all's definition, whatever. But by my definition. I don't think that it works well enough to yeah. matter. So you would actually, and the mistress's definition is the one that matters. So you would to actually, me for sure. <laughs> you would actually recommend that people do it because it wastes stupid people's time. Like they're, they're like if people are. That's oh, a good point. You know what we yeah. didn't talk about was all these fucking videos. All of them. All I'm these. telling you, we didn't talk. I'm about not talking the, about porn. The, the the changing of the eye color. Yes. Oh God. Oh, we didn't talk about that. That was good. Uh, just quickly, quickly. We've got to touch on this. Is, is we do. This, is this a hard shot or? No, 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 no. 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 Let's, let's do it, it okay. right now because so I'm not ready. <laughs> one of the biggest problems with subliminal messaging is that there are so many definitions. Yeah. And um, it, mine's right. Mine's right. There's a whole thing. Mine's wrong. <laughs> There's a whole like uh, culture. There's a like a YouTube culture. There is. And a self-help yeah. culture. That has taken subliminal messaging and they have taken kind of the mystique <laughs> aspect of it and they've put it into these um, these videos that you're supposed to watch or listen to at night when you're sleeping or like while you're going while you're working, but you're supposed to listen to them so quietly that you can't actually you can't hear actually them, hear them. <laughs> turn the volume all the way down and just playing it <laughs> will get you to we've got uh, to make one of these we've I've got, got to. to okay for all the people who believe in it don't trust all the laughing we just did oh. i've been drinking a little bit <laughs> and um and that's why i've been laughing i actually think this stuff is totally legitimate and six-pack philosophy will be coming out with a series of self-help 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 videos self-help, self-help youtube videos, videos. yes yeah. um to uh, help everybody, all of our listeners, to uh, I think better their lives. We should put Wait. one out on, 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 on losing weight and yeah. gaining weight. Yeah. What, what happens? If choosing you, better beer. Choosing better beer. Yeah. Changing your political philosophy. Yeah. What happens if you turn it up too much? It's like, well, the one that turns your eyes blue turn them way too yeah. blue. It's like, yeah. no, you don't want that That's one. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. There's actually yeah, there a is. YouTube video out there that claims... More that if you one. listen to it, much. it will change. Yeah, it's several. It will change your eyes from brown to blue, and your hair and to from- blonde. Change your hair to blonde. Yeah. Uh, so th- they're arguing that you can physically change someone through subliminal messages. Yeah. And I hope that's true. We're actually going to put one out, John. 
Wait, wait, wait. Let's, I got to ask. I think let's put one out that will ch- will change the size of your private member. Oh, there is that. Is there, there is. I yeah. found it. Yeah. He was he was like, the people at my work, they don't even know. Like, when I, I've got my earbuds in during the work day, and they'll think that I'm just like jamming out to music and stuff, but I'm really listening to, to uh, uh, subliminal messages. And I'm telling you, I can tell you how to make all of them work. He said, uh, he, he said you know, my, my eyes have changed color. Um, oh, uh, natural male enhancements. Those were the, that, those were the, uh, the words that he used. He said, I have listened to the natural male enhancements ones <laughs> and I'm telling you I can last longer. <laughs> it's bigger. It's fantastic. It was a little less sexy than that, but I, <laughs> like, what would happen if a female listened to that? She'd get a bigger penis. <laughs> penis? So wait, here's my question. Here's Maybe my a question. bigger labia. I don't know. I hate to bring race into this. Uh, I really do. But does this only work for white people, or could a black person get blonde hair and blue eyes too if they just listen? For the I, I don't know. There, there is definitely I'm so glad like you a, went that direction. I was worried for a minute there. There is definitely like an odd, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's an odd kind of um, split there because I don't know, like if a a person with really really dark eyes and really really dark hair came out blue eyed and and blonde, and we could verify that they hadn't died it could be tested died their stuff or were wearing contacts i I, I would be intrigued to say the least not intrigued enough that i want to take the test and and, no i don't want to be the i I don't think we should do a i kind of actually wanted to i actually kind of wanted to listen list air quotes guys listen to them turn the volume all the way down and just play it at night and just like (laughs) play play the craziest one i could find and see what happens. See, see, see if your penis gets bigger. Yeah, but I, I, I do genuinely believe so. There are all of these people, um, and I think in order to trust that these things actually work, you a have to be very susceptible anyway. And one of the things that that we've seen time and time again with hypnosis, and these people in general will be very quick to tell you that hypnosis and subliminal messaging are not the same thing. Yeah. Um. But the people who believe in this tend to be incredibly subge- suggestible. Um, R- read gullible. Yes, read gullible. I'm not afraid to say Hear it. Hear gullible. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've been gullible my whole life, I, but I still don't buy this shit. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> um, I, there was a time in my life where I probably would have tried subliminal messaging. Yeah. I, I, I was too young. We didn't have yeah. the technology. If, if we'd have had all this stuff when I was 19, I probably would have tried it. Uh, I, I, you know, I tried everything. But, so, but so. the thing about it is it has turned into largely a self-help community. And I would actually really like to see some studies where they controlled for all the factors. Because I think that they're turning down the volume. So they're not hearing this. They're not actually getting whatever information, however valuable or Invaluable. useless. Yeah that information might be. They're not actually getting the information from the material. Um, And so I think that if they're getting any benefit from it, they're getting the benefit from the repetition of, I am going to turn on my self-help book and I'm going to listen to it tonight and I'm going to be a better person tomorrow. And and you know what? And that's powerful. I have no problem with somebody doing that. That is really powerful. As long as you understand that's what you're doing. So I want to do some controlled experiments where you don't, um, where, and, and it would be really difficult to do, but I don't want them to know that they're receiving it. I don't want them to actively participate in receiving it. Yeah, I think that's illegal. And I know, I know <laughs> it, it is. And that's why I don't well, think that we could do it. Um, if you want to participate in Anna's strangely bizarre Nazi experiment, it, go it, ahead it, and it, contact us at sixpackphilosophy.com. And then com. I don't know how you would measure whether their life is improving or not. It, it, it's a real easy experiment. You take some and use the real self-help videos, and some use a placebo video uh, audio. You play it to a group of people, and you do double blind. Nobody knows who got the placebo audio and who got the real self-help audio, and see whose penis got bigger. I there mean, you go. Oh hey, if you want to participate, I still in, don't think hey, this works. Can, can, can we do? Can we do boobs get so, bigger? So here's my thought. Sure. Okay. Here's my thought. If you want to participate in the six-pack philosophy, my boobs got bigger uh, exercise. Let and us some know. people will actually get breast augmentation. <laughs> So, so here's Just my, so we have all the things controlled. Here's my thought, okay? I think on our audio, we should start putting below our audio the penis enhancement and boob enhancement 
uh, audio. Hold on, and you then, mean I actually have to listen to that? And then, and then we, we do could, it below the audio. We yeah, could, but we have to figure out what they're saying. To we, make could, the, the, we have to figure out the magic inc incantation to make the boobs grow bigger <laughs> and the penis grow bigger. What? So, and then we could claim that though it's not been scientifically proven yet, that we're fairly sure that six pack philosophy audience has the biggest penises and boobs of anybody, <laughs> <laughs> and no longer contributes to erectile dysfunction. Yes, absolutely. We fix okay, I, I think we've kind of taken this. On a, right. on a drunken spiral. Let's close yeah. this down because I've had that. I've had a couple of these wonderful beers. They are good, and I finished two. You drunk. All right, so just real quick, subliminal bullshit or not? Bullshit, John. For for a lot of the things that the community <laughs> claims they do, absolutely bullshit. But I mean, I, I think there th there is some effect, and, and science has even measured this effect. I'm going to go with a pure. De if you go with a pure definition of subliminal philosophy, subliminal messaging, bullshit. So three bullshits. Um, all right. So are we done with this? I think we are. All right. With that was that, a lot of fun. That it was, was a lot was of kind fun. of bizarre. I, I didn't know how it was going to go when we started this, and uh, I think the, That's uh, the best way to I go. think the magic beer uh, is the what, truth is serum. What did it. The truth serum yeah. did it. It's the truth. Yeah. Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it and definitely want to. Hey, uh, how can uh, they support the show, John? I'm, I'm getting there. I'm I'm getting there, Anna. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> can you back off your mic just a Fine. bit? Here. <laughs> you know what? Do your thing. All right. So if you want to, I like that. Do your if, thing. <laughs> if you want to support the show, there's a couple ways you can do it. Easiest way is just to go like our our videos. You can subscribe to our channel. You can check us out on whatever platform you're used to, to listening to us on. Uh, we're now on YouTube, so if you want to actually see what's going on, uh, Mike playing with his nipples. Maybe, <laughs> we'll a, maybe we'll make a gif of that since he did. Amen, amen. But, uh, but you can go check us out on YouTube now. Um, and then if, if you want to support us uh, financially, you know, this, this equipment doesn't come cheap. In fact, we're fairly sure our board is going out now. Uh, so we'll probably be replacing that soon. <laughs> you can go uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. Not only will you be helping the show, but you'll get some cool donor perks, which are changing at New Year's. They are changing. So Lots I, of stuff changing so at New much. Year's. I, I, I think it's going to be better. So maybe you should wait. Um, but, you know, you'll still get the new stuff anyway if you do it now. So. See, that was my, my attempt at a subliminal message. I was trying to go yeah. above uh, people's that, that was hearing great. ability. Was it was I am so not excited quite. about yeah. what we're going to do the new year. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, it, it, it's not all ironed out, but there, there's going to be a... Ironed? Ironed. Look, I'm from East Texas. Leave me the fuck alone. All right. It's not all, it's not all settled yet, Thank but, you. Uh, you know, there's going to be some big changes. Uh, the show's, it's still going to be your show, but it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be better. It's going to be better. I think, we uh, think we hope. I think because we're going to fire Anna and everything is going to be, no, never mind. I never understand. Mind. She's a star. We can't do it. We can't her. do that. It's uh, a little horse it's, shit. It's just going to be Anna. <laughs> so, uh, Hey, no, we're not going to do that. This is six pack philosophy with Anna. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know what? You guys keep saying that. Come New Year's, I'm going to put up a poll on a page. <laughs> you're going to win. Who their favorite one is, I'm and I don't you. think it is. It's going it, to. You're the star. I don't know who's going to win. And it's the star. All right. Y'all are both kind of dicks. I might win. <laughs> hey, All hey. right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you've enjoyed it because we certainly have. Uh, the beer helps us enjoy it. Um, so while you're listening, if you can, if you you know you're not driving or anything, there's some sort of jigsaw Jenga we are game going on. Toast here. Are you? Um, but anyway. If you can drink while you listen, do that. If you're driving while you listen, don't do that. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let us know what you guys think about supplemental messaging. Screw in it. In the comments down below or up top or hearts and subscribes and shares. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Subscribe. I think that closing was actually longer than the show. Subscribe. You know what it was longer than? Your openings Your have kind of... Yes, absolutely. It was longer You're... than his penis. Yeah. It was longer than any penis, really. It was kind of long. Your openings have really gotten short. It's like, what? They have. They have. Yeah. They've gotten very, very short. What am I supposed to do? Is it cold water? Yes. I, There's I, cold water at the beginning of the that, episode. That's what, all, that, that's what always shortens that's my openings. All own. right. Okay. <laughs> my closings, too. Okay. I'm going first. All right. Six-pack philosophy can be used to treat closed-mindedness, straight ticket voting, and faulty reasoning. Side effects of six-pack philosophy may include questioning the status quo, thinking for oneself, and electile dysfunction. Ask your bartender if six-pack philosophy is right for you. And as always, keep on drinking and thinking. This has been Six-Pack Philosophy.